Clap it up right now. Get it hot, man. Get it hot. Y'all might have seen him on the Alan Cox show or his hilarious specials on YouTube. Give it up for my friend, Bill Squire, everybody. Let's go. Hey, keep it going for Elijah and Anthony. And Carter. Yeah, see how smooth that was with our little handshake there? Me and Elijah, young black guy, older white guy, coming together. And you guys are like, oh, what, you think you're cool, Bill? Because you go to black friends? Like, no. But I do have fat white daughters, so I do hang out with black people a lot. <laughs> Also, keep it going for Carter. He looks like, uh, he was the white one. Uh, <laughs> he, he looks like Bobby Hill went through like an Eminem phase. <laughs> I'm spaghetti. <laughs> so I do a lot of shows here in Cleveland, and so I, and I have a lot of material, a lot of written material. And I'll tell you what, if this show goes south, I'll slide into that, you won't even know the difference. But I wanted to do something different. I want to do something called a reverse crowd work show. Anybody watch stand up on like TikTok or you know, yeah. reels and shit like that? And you'll see the, the, they'll go, hey, what do you do for a living? And you'll say, what's your job? I'm a nurse. You're a nurse? And you're like, ah, you want to take my blood or some shit like that? <laughs> do you know Anthony? He's a nurse too. Yes. You do know him? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's, do you work with him? <laughs> or you don't actually know him? No, you're just like, ah. <laughs> trying to, that's my black friend, not yours. You get your own. <laughs> See, it's fun, all right? You never know what's gonna happen. I don't know what I'm gonna say. Sometimes I say shit, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, we'll do some of that. But I wanted to do something called the reverse crowd work show where I have you guys ask me questions and then I just see what I come up with. Uh, and to get things started, I had some of my friends that are comedians record videos to ask me questions to kind of set the tone. Does that sound fun? Yeah. Okay, we don't have to do it. <laughs> Does that sound fun? Yeah. All right, cool. Cleveland's own Mary Santora. She moved to New York recently and I guess she had to sell her good phone. <laughs> Got her Motorola out. <laughs> All right, let's see what Mary's question is. Mr. Squire, hello. Hi, everybody. It's Mary Santora. Um, I decided to do a Cleveland-centric, it's not really a question, but here's what it is. Kill, fuck, Mary. I-71, I-90, I-480. And I want you to cite your sources. I want you to give detailed reasons why you would kill, fuck, Mary, 71, 90, 480. Okay. First of all, that game's called Mary Fuck Kill, not Kill Fuck Mary. That's the kind of... She is, yeah, Fuck Mary Kill. No one says Kill Fuck Mary. That's a wild way to say that. So Kill Mary, uh, <laughs> just for how she said that. All right, so it was Fuck Mary Kill with I-71, I-90, and 480. All right, let's start with fuck. 480. Because we're getting fucked by 480 either way. So we might as well lean into it. 480, they just put, 480 keeps trying to act like it's a better highway than it is. They just put like a new express lane on 480 that's for like 800 yards. Like, it's right there after 77, it goes to this express lane, and then they're like, oh, I'll get in the express lane. Just kidding. Uh, you're just, now you just gotta merge again. Sorry about that. It is not a good express lane. We, we keep trying to act like we're a bigger, better city, but that, that express lane, it just, it's not doing anything. It's just fucking everything up because people in BMWs are like, I'll get in the express lane. I don't even need to use my turn signal when you're using your express lane. And they get over there and then they're like, oh, it's over. 
Time to get back in. I'm still not gonna use my turn signal. I'm just trying to get back to Beechwood. <laughs> or orange, you know. Yeah. Saying something without saying something, you guys remember? Okay. All right, so that's, that's fuck. Uh, Mary, 71. 71, she's old, she's sturdy. <laughs> She goes south, you know? <laughs> she gets a little rough down in those, you know, Medina and Wayne County, but you know, <laughs> you can rely on her. And then I'm killing I-90. Because you did, okay, well, we'll get to can I have my reasons first? I, we'll get to you. We'll get to you. Just wait, just wait, just wait. I-90 has dead man's curve on it. So I'm going to stop them before they stop me. All right, I thought that was good. <laughs> you guys not know the dead man's curve right there. And if we kill I-90, then fuck, we save so many lives. And also, then maybe they'll keep it open when we're trying to get the Browns games. Uh, Cause anybody ever been like trying to get to a Browns game and then they close the East 9th entrance and you're like, oh, I gotta go to Edgewater now? Fuck. <laughs> I'm a bunch of West Siders. All right. Cool. All right. Why? Why, why do you want to? No, we don't need to talk about it. Cool. <laughs> that really helped the interactions of the show. But now you get to be a ask the first question from the audience. What's your name? Jillian, I know you, Jillian, you're a fan, you're good, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jillian, uh, what, what question do you have for me? I didn't want to go first. You didn't want to go first? He didn't, Mary went first. <laughs> yeah, Mary did go first. And you're in a better, like, uh, you're, you're not as pixelated as her, so. Um, let's talk about, like, Cleveland food, right? All right, give me a, give me a question about Cleveland food. Uh, Oh, we're gonna stay with the fuck Mary Kill thing? All right, all right, what do we got? No, 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 we'll do fuck Mary Kill. What, what, what three foods? All right, there's like three foods in Cleveland, all right? Okay, so we got your pierogies. Pierogies, okay. Corn beef. Corn beef, yeah. And pizza. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, interject here and I say a pull, pull boy. I was going to say pull boy. All right, pull boy. All right, we'll do a fuck Mary kill yeah. with uh, uh, corned beef, uh, pierogies, and a po boy. All right. What does Cleveland do best? What does Cleveland do best? No, I'm gonna do my, what I want. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and make it funny. Like I'm not gonna be like, here's my serious rankings of these foods. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go, uh, this might not go over well in Cleveland, but I'm gonna kill pierogies. Let me explain why. Because to eat pierogies and to make them good, you have to put sour cream on them, and that looks like cum, and that's gay. <laughs> and I'm not as open as Carter about... <laughs> I'm gonna fuck corned beef. Yeah. yeah. Because it's Irish and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna feel big. <laughs> With corned beef, like even a big old slime is, you know, th those things are piled high with meat. But we know, once you get those pants off. <laughs> you guys ever heard that about Irish guys? Just like a little, a little tater tot. <laughs> I'm gonna marry a po' boy because I didn't think this out, which is also gay because it's a boy. So I fucked up. <laughs> and it's a boy. It's not even like, oh, I really fucked up. I should have, uh, can you kill the boy? I don't know. <laughs> Put it in the freezer and send it to Alabama. <laughs> Cavs fan. Yeah. You got a question? Now that's the top of head. You guys, as we're sitting here, just think, he might, oh, shoes, okay, let's talk about shoes. 
All right, I love shoes. What do you want to ask me about shoes? Um, favorite Jordans colorways. My favorite Jordan colorways. Oh, you're really going to see if I'm a good comedian, huh? <laughs> this is going to be really hard to make funny. Uh, the white ones. Uh, <laughs> ones too. I just, I feel more comfortable. I'm wearing black ones right now. I'm wearing black ones right now. But it's <laughs> This is uh, Roy Wood Jr. from The Daily Show. Uh, he just quit The Daily Show, but he's a very good friend of mine and a very funny guy. So let's see what his question is here. Hey Bill, how you doing? It's uh, comedian Roy Wood Jr. Listen, quick question. Um, what would be your plans for creating equity and wealth amongst members of the black community? Thanks. And also, what would you do to stop the crack at the Well, I'm already doing my part with my fat white daughters because they both have their license. And they both have, like, reliable transportation. So that's where we're getting things started. <laughs> Fuck you, Roy. <laughs> I'm also... One of the people that made Jordan a billionaire because I had bought so many of his shoes. So, uh, and then I, I listened to, not a lot of hip hop, but a lot of like old like R&B and soul and shit like that. But uh, the main thing that I would do is, so one, one big thing. <laughs> I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna fucking nail this. My heart is going so fast right now. But I'm gonna fucking land this plane somehow. All right. All right. So how did black people get fucked over so many times in America because of systemic <clears throat> racism, right? So if you guys don't know about it, like redlining, you guys know what redlining is? Where they, uh, I don't either. Uh, <laughs> but I know it's bad. So no more of that. And then every politician has to have a black mom in their cabinet. Like, not like, not like, not quite, sir. That's an aunt. We don't know if she had any kids. But I'm talking about like a black mom that holds things down, that's got the arm, you know the arm. Uh, <laughs> And then when they want to run an idea by their cabinet, it's got to get past her. So if they're like, okay, uh, we think babies are embryos and you got to put them in the freezer in Alabama, there's got to be a, they got to get that past the black mom and she'd be like, mm mm. <laughs> I don't got that much space in my freezer. <laughs> Really trying not to do the voice. <laughs> no, I, now I don't feel like I could <laughs> do the voice. Do the voice. You guys fucking don't want me to get out of here to, with a career. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. I'm not like a voices guy. Like, oh, child. I'm like, no, 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 fuck it. <laughs> Who? Oh, okay. Oh, hand up. Okay. What, what's your question? What's your name? Bobby. Hi, Bobby. What's your question, Bobby? If you could put anything inanimate or real into a cannonball and fire it, all's forgiven, what would it be? Okay, wait, what? <laughs> I, if I, I, I heard it, but I just, what? Oh. All right, so if you could put anything inanimate or real into a cannon, not a cannonball, into a cannon and fire it, no repercussions. <laughs> what would it be? Mm. Well, if he was still around, Art Modell. <laughs> fuck that guy forever. Uh, but some, some, anything, and not. I mean. 
I don't think I really have thought this much about cannons in my life. No, we're having fun, but like, you really, you really, like, you guys wanna hear more about how I can fix black people's problems? Uh, oh, I put all the white people in the cannon. Gotcha, Roy! Fuck yeah! Let's get rid of all the white people. Now you gotta do it. Oh, you have a question, all right. You turn into a woman, first three things you do. I turn into a woman, the first three things I do. Uh, number one, fucking find it. Uh, it's gotta be down there somewhere. And now I don't have the pressure and the judginess. So I'm getting, that G-spot's mine. <laughs> Number two, I'm making a Tinder account. <laughs> and it's just over. <laughs> for all, for all, everyone, I'm fucking, men, women, everybody's getting. <laughs> stealing my daughter's boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this so racial? <laughs> Uh, and then three, uh, getting a raise and be like, see, that wasn't that hard. It was you. <laughs> Let's check in with the black mom. Mm -mm. Jim, what's your question? What role would you play in The Last of Us? Uh, what role would I play in The Last of Us? Uh, I didn't see The Last of Us, but I'm just gonna throw out, I know one role and it's, uh, okay, I know three roles. I know there's uh, uh, the guy from The Mandalorian, and then he's got a daughter, and then there's Nick Offerman, and I think he gets gay married. Okay. I'm gonna go with Nick Offerman's husband. <laughs> Because, like, he's gonna make me come. <laughs> I trust Nick Offerman. To... You know about Nick Offerman, he was an actor, he is an actor, he was on a show called Parks and Rec, and uh, his character on that show worked with Wood a lot, and that's based on who he really is, and uh, so I know he's good with Wood, so let's do it! <laughs> My friend Kyle Kinane, hates what we're doing right now. I know that for a fact. He <laughs> also, he just made this decision for some reason. If you guys know Kyle Kinane, he usually has like a big bushy beard and then for some reason he's like, you know what? I don't wanna have to go near a school for a while, so. So uh, he doesn't like crowd work. He's, he's, a, he's a prolific comedian, very great writer, but he doesn't uh, love shit like this. But uh, let's see what he has to, to say. <clears throat> hey, Bill, I have a question. I was wondering, would you describe uh, your comedic style as more cuddly wuddly or cutie patootie? <laughs> comedian who would it be and why all right if I had to come oh, this, this is because I don't hate any comedian. like I'm I'm very up to the school that comedy is subjective people like what they like and they don't like what they don't like but if I'm gonna murder a comedian I want to have the maximum impact that I can but then I also just have some you know rage in me and uh, you guys remember Kyle Kinane, he asked that question earlier. <laughs> about cuddly Woody and cutie patootie. Kyle Kinane is my answer. I'm murdering my friend. <laughs> okay, I, I'm gonna go with this guy right here. Uh, do you have any pet peeves? Do I have any pet peeves? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just like all of you, all the time. <laughs> 
Uh, no, my, my pet peeve is, uh, I mean, being a comedian for 20 years, is people <laughs> coming up to me after, like, I own two houses, I have a nice car, I have, like, a great life, I'm doing well, and my pet peeve is when people come up to, after a show and they're like, hey, stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, I got this shit. Just because I didn't move to New York or LA, like, I like doing it from Cleveland. I'm on a legendary radio station in Cleveland in 2024, so it's not the same, but it's still fucking cool. I love this city. I love how I get to do comedy. I get to help other people in the scene get better, like Elijah and Anthony. Like, I, those are my guys, and I, I like trying to help them. Carter. Uh, <laughs> he went to Chicago, so fuck him, but uh, no. <laughs> No, I, 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 that's my pet peeve, is just people being like, you just stick with it. I'm like, no, I, I got it. I'm, I'm good. I'm doing good. All right. Uh, any uh, crazy stories with the law? Any, any crazy stories with the law? Yeah, growing up. Uh, gr growing up in Cleveland? Not really when I was growing up. Uh, all right. I'm going to tell you the story from my special. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. I got arrested a few years ago. It was my friend's birthday. We went down to the Mansfield Reformatory to go to the haunted house where they filmed the Shawshank Redemption. And uh, the idea was we were gonna drink, we we're gonna go down there, buy a fast pass, go through the line real fast, and then go back to a bar and keep drinking. And then we got down there, it turns out that everybody else that went to the haunted house also bought fast passes. <laughs> And uh, so when everybody has a fast pass, it's just the line. <laughs> so we were in line for like three and a half hours, but don't worry, we brought a ton of booze with us, so we just got wasted in line. And so when I finally got up to show my ticket, it was on my phone, my phone died, and the guy was like, sir, if you don't have a ticket, you can't come in. I was like, why would I wait in line for three and a half hours if I didn't have a ticket? He's like, I don't know, man, I hate this job. I just want to go home. <laughs> And then I walk past him and a cop stops me and the cop's like, hey, if you don't got a ticket, you gotta get out of here. And I was like, fine, but fuck you. And then he's like, well, now you're under arrest. I'm like, you can't arrest me for saying fuck you. He's like, I can if you're drunk. I'm like, ooh, got me with this legal mumbo jumbo. Uh, <laughs> So since I was getting arrested, I was like, might as well lean into it. So I was just like, you look like fat John Cena. Everyone can see you. <laughs> Even his partner laughed at that one. Like he turned because <laughs> he didn't want to see us. He didn't want us to see him laughing, but he turned and then like his shoulders start doing this. <laughs> and then someone got pepper sprayed. I don't remember who it was. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> so then I got to jail. When I got to jail, I saw somebody that I recognized from the haunted house. I was like, dude, you're at the haunted house too. Were you drunk? He's like, I'm still drunk. I was like, me too. I'm like, did you tell the cop to fuck off? He's like, I tried to take his gun. <laughs> so we started a gang. Uh, <laughs> we called ourselves the Dufresne Boys in honor of Shawshank Redemption. First we tried to tunnel out, that didn't work. And so then we told the guards that we do their taxes. We're like, hey, we'll do your taxes. They're like, it's October. And I'm like, come on, let me see a W-2. <laughs> anyway, that's how I met Hunter Biden. Uh, <laughs> that's all, guys. Thank you so much. Follow me on Instagram and shit. Bill Squire. Good night. <laughs>